Hey guys, I'm going to be talking about the theme of doubles inside the novel I just read, which is a scapegoat. And as we learned in the class, um, a doppelganger literally means double or double goer. Um, a doppelganger is often uh, the ghostly counterpart of a living person. It can mean double, alter ego, or even a person who has the same name. And that's what's funny about the scapegoat um, when you're following the main character, John, and his doppelganger, Gene. Um, you look at their names, and Jean is essentially the French version of John, so uh, it's kind of interesting. And aside from that, they look and speak completely identically. So um, the 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 idea of doppelganger is taken very literally here. Um, along with that, um, the doppelganger is also, when being analyzed, seen as a psychic projection of being caused by unresolved anxieties. So, for example. Um, in the text, um, John is always quoted as saying he's very unsatisfied or depressed with life. And uh, I have an interesting quote here from the from the novel that really kind of shows, um, I guess, a, a real metamorphosis of uh, John when him and Jean switch identities. And uh, uh, John says, the change of clothes had brought a change of personality. My shoulders look broader. I seem to hold my head higher. Even the expression in my eyes resembled his. I forced a smile, and the reflection in the mirror smiled back at me, a casual half-laugh that somehow went with the square padded shoulders of the coat and the bow tie so unlike any tie I'd ever worn. Um, when you read this, it makes more sense uh, knowing John's situation because um, John is single, he has no children, he really has no responsibilities to anybody other than himself, and and it's interesting that Gene envies that and he calls that true freedom. And when John um, finally gains a family and all the things that Gene has, he feels free. So it's really interesting how each of them desire what the other has. Um, much like uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, um, I guess you could say one is more evil than the other. Uh, definitely for sure. Um, there's a funny quote in, um, in the novel when Gene actually tells John, um, he says, you know, it amuses me enormously to use other people's possessions. It is one of life's greatest pleasures. And from that, it kind of foreshadows um, a lot of the story. But um, their intentions are made pretty clear. Um, John actually ends up fixing all of the things that was wrong, or he was um, attempting to fix all the things that were wrong. He, he accomplished a lot with uh, Gene's family. But um, towards the end, you realize that Gene actually ends up uh, ruining John's life. He resigns him from the university that he used to work at. Uh, he bankrupts him completely and takes all his money. And I think he destroys his car, too. So um, it's, it's really unique when you look at doppelgangers, um, especially when thinking about uh, when we read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So, um, yeah, definitely a, a great story that uh, defines the doppelganger theme. So yeah, this, uh, this pretty much covers the, uh, doppelganger analysis and, uh, I'll have, um, more to come right now. So, uh, and just keep clicking. All right. Thank you.